Welcome, my name is Bora Nelson with Random Artac, and in this tutorial, we're going to be working in Substance Designer, making a very simple material that you see right here, and then also how to export that and use that in Substance Painter. If you like this material, it is available for any of my Patreon supporters. So that's patreon.com slash random attack, and you'll see it in the link below there. So without further ado, let's jump into Substance Designer. So here you can see the tree that I have, and it's basically a simple fur that's uh, warped and then kind of a splatter thing. We bring that into a bevel modifier there, and then that's going to be the normal. The roughness and the metallic map are just kind of derived from that, as well as the combination of the color. And so it's not going to look exactly like this when we make it, but it's going to look pretty close to this. So we're going to be able to use this kind of as a reference as we're trying to make this from scratch. So first you go File, New Substance. All right. And then going to go ahead and minimize that there. Now we have our four. That's going to be color, normal, roughness, and metallic. You hit spacebar, and then I'm going to type in F, and then U for fur. And I just kind of like that fur right there. I don't need it linked anywhere, so I can just delete that. And then I also want a purlin noise. You can kind of play around with this and get exactly what you want, but I found that these two are really good. So then I'm going to go ahead and warp these. So it's warping the fur. Um, you can see right here how it's orange and gray. Uh, that means you can either put a color or a gray map in, and this is gray, so that's a gray map. The second one I'm going to be putting in uh, is going to be how it warps. Now you can see it's warped crazy. We don't want it like that. And so you can actually change the intensity down to whatever you want, and I found that about 0.18 is about right. It kind of looks like strings of hair. Now we're going to go ahead and warp this, so actually splatter this, excuse me. And it's it's looking pretty noisy and you can't really see much. Zooming it, um, you're going to play around with this until you get what you want. I find if I zoom it too much like this, I start to get some weird artifacts. Pattern size is kind of what you want to edit mostly. So I'm just going to do 250 so you can see that. But you can see that artifacting. So let's try 200. And it's less, but you can still see a little bit of pattern there. So I'm going to bring this down. And now you can see that if they all end in zero, it actually kind of uh, seamlessly tiles a lot better. So the rotation, you want to change this up, the, the variation. So it's taking every single one of these warped images and then just twisting them all at a random place. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can do the pattern size height. Um, I'm going to change this to 500 and that 500 and then change the zoom down like this. And you can see that it's looking actually better. Now the gain is how strong this is, okay? So I don't want it too strong, about that is right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit spacebar and create a bevel. So it's gonna take a grayscale like this and nothing shows up until you actually move it into the normal like that. Now as you start to do it, It's not going to be the normal intensity. It's going to be some other thing. So I'm just going to change this gain for a little bit so that we can see this a little bit clearer. So now as I play, you can start to see that. And I'm just going to try and kind of get it where I want it. But what it's going to be is the distance. The distance is actually going to let you know. So if I go to the splatter, I'm going to change. I'm just going to go back and forth, back and forth between the splatter and bevel until I get what I want. I'm changing this to 200 so it's even bigger like that. I'm going to change the pattern size there. Size variation up like that. And now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And then I'm going to increase the gain once again until I get what I want. Now you can start to see some really interesting things occurring on the texture itself. So in the 3D view, you can see it's doing some stuff. So now I actually almost have exactly what I want. Um, but if you go, it's kind of going the wrong direction. It's coming out instead of going in. And so what you can do with that is go ahead and go to the normal intensity and change that. Or you can invert the, the splatter. Now go back to the bevel and play around with that a little bit more. And you'll notice that this is a lot of trial and error. Um, rarely should you just know exactly how to get the effect you want. I find that sometimes I play around and get a completely different effect than what I was looking for. 
And then I actually go back and save those um, in a kind of a library reference. So don't worry about making mistakes because more often than not, you're actually going to get something cool. So here I'm just smoothing it a bit. And it's giving this kind of clean leather feel. Now I like to take the splatter and actually put it in for the roughness. And right off the bat, that actually looks pretty dang good. So the cracks are rougher than the, um, the exposed faces. So there is a little sheen. And that's, that's actually almost exactly what we want, but I'm going to show you this cool little trick that I found as well. So that if you want to kind of, uh, bump it up a little bit or bump it down a little bit, you can do a blend like this. So just put that in there. And then I do a uniformed color and make sure that it's grayscale. So it's not color. So white's going to be, uh, very, very rough and then black is going to be shiny. So you can play around with the different things, or you can just play around with the opacity. I find that that's the, that gives me a lot of flexibility there. And then I can just put it in there and you can start to see if I want it shinier, I can make it black. If I want it less shiny, I can kind of bump it up towards the gray or the white, or I can even change the opacity. Now you can see that we're still getting the cracks being more rough than the actual thing. So that's looking pretty good, but I'm going to play around with this and get it to whatever I want it to be. And again, this is just trial and error. This isn't a science. It's not, um, you could probably go up online and actually find different, uh, roughness for real material, but I find that just eyeballing it usually works the best for me and being consistent that way. Now I like a little bit of metal, but not a lot. So with this, I just do a uniform color as well. And so we have the roughness, the normal and the metallic done. So now what we need to do is the color. So you can do a blend. Okay. Now, um, let's look at this really fast. Sorry, I'm just looking at the reference. So we do have a blend and then we're using a basically the gray map to kind of tell how to blend it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a blend and then two uniform colors. I'm just going to put two of those there. So there's my two colors. And then I'm going to take the splatter and put that as the blending option. Okay. So now I actually need to change these colors so that we can see what that looks like. So I'm going to change it to something really gross so we can see it. And we look at this and it's actually looking okay. The cracks are the dark colors and the, the exposed faces are the lighter colors. So we actually want reverse. So you can kind of move these around or you can remove the nodes or I can just change it any way I want. So you can also just delete that, then duplicate it to get it exactly what you want to be the same color. So I actually really don't like this color picker here. I prefer the one in Substance Painter, but you can kind of play around. If you want to get an exact color, you can actually take a picture and do a color drop from there. So I'm just going to connect that to my color. And you can see that looks way too bright for the leather we want. We want like a richer um, dark brown. And again, this thing's kind of hard to get it there, but we'll try our best. So I'm just exaggerating this quite a bit. And then I'm going to make this just a little less dark like that. So there you go. Now something else that's causing this is the actual blend method that we've picked is this. And so it's not as sharp as we'd like it, or it might be too sharp. So you, what you can do is you can do a level and then just connect it to that splatter there. And now we can actually change the intensity of this blending because white's going to blend, black's not going to blend uh, like that. So you can see here, you can play around with this. I'm going to keep it kind of exaggerated, but you can get the blending that you want between the cracks and the exposed surfaces. Now that looks pretty good. Now you can play around with the colors and stuff and get it to where you want it to be. I'm going to just make this a little bit more red. And I can actually pick this and then just bump it up a bit. So something like that, but that's too red. So you can see, I, I don't like these color pickers. Yeah, there's not even a different option that I can see. And so that's just keep playing around with it, get what you want. 
but we'll also show you how to expose those parameters so you can actually change it in Substance Painter too, so that you can actually get different colors on the fly. So now we want to save this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Save As. So I'm looking how to name this, and it is just in the save. So I just hit right here. I can actually rename this. So I want to call this like Leather Rough. But the actual package is going to be named when you save it out. So if I go save, I don't want save all file. I actually just want to right click this and hit save. And then you can just save it as anything you want. So leather rough. There you go. And now you actually have to S export this as a .sbsar. And so Substance Painter is going to be able to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to call it leather rough. And I'm just making sure I know the file directory is here. Okay. And so now I'm here in Substance Painter. And I'm just going to grab these two and then just drag them into. And I have to say these are base materials. So I'm going to show you the difference between the leather fine that I created and the leather rough that we created on this tutorial. So I'm going to import those. And you can see that I have both of these. Just go ahead and drag and drop these. And they're smart. They're not smart materials, but they're... Uh, base material, so they'll just go on like this. This is the leather that I created before the tutorial. And you can see how deep this is cutting. It's because there's actually a height map in this one. So I'm just going to move that down. And you can see that that's looking pretty good. Like the coloring's great. Um, the, the normal map's looking pretty good. Now let's pull up the leather rough that we made and look at the two differences. So this one... It's obviously different. Um, you can control the, the height if you don't like it too much. But you'll notice that we can't control the color, which is kind of a problem. If you go down to the leather that I made before the tutorial, you'll see that I actually have primary colors and secondary colors, and I can create anything I want. So I could bring that up, and I could make something ugly like green leather from like the 70s or something like that, right? But we want to be able to do this with the leather that we created. So we exported it just fine, and it's working that way. But it's not giving us all these options. Okay. So I'm just going to play around with this a little bit more and just kind of see. You could get, like, the options are limitless. And so this is a very simple function in Substance Designer. There's a way to expose this. It's actually right-click and click Expose. So right here, let's find it. Oh, sorry, you don't right click. You go to the actual thing that you want to expose, and then there's expose, and then it's, you type in what you want. So I'm going to call this main color, like that, and hit OK. And then not right click, just click this, go to the thing that you want, hit expose, new, secondary color. Okay. And now as I go to the leather rough, You'll see down here, I actually have input parameters. But I actually have to use them in Substance Designer there. I can expose anything. So if I click here and I want to expose the intensity of the warp, I can just, you know, do that as well. And then I right click this. You can see I have the three inputs. And so I can ex uh, export this as a .sbsar. And I'm going to have to re import that back into Substance Painter again by. Dragging and dropping from the file. I wish there's a way just to basically update it, but you can't. Or you might be able to. I don't know how to right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and I accidentally grabbed both of these, but that's okay. So just base materials, base materials, current session. I don't want this permanently in my bar. And I'm going to drag and drop this one in. You can't just do it on the screen. You got to do it over here. And you'll see. I have the main colors exposed, and I also have the intensity, so I can change these different colors around. And then watch this intensity. I, I wouldn't want this in the real thing, but you can see I can do this, and it's pretty cool. Now, you never really want that. And that's it. So thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope you learned something. We went over how to make a material. We went over how to input port this and expose the parameters. Uh, as always, follow us, um, hit subscribe, leave a comment that helps us get noticed, and also consider following us on Twitter or Facebook or on Patreon. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get more of these videos out, and I always appreciate the support. Have an awesome day.